G'day guys, Steve with Broken Sprocket. In this video, I'm gonna go through the things you should look for when purchasing a used dirt bike on the internet. So, let's get started. Okay, just purchased this RM125 2003 model. It's in pretty average condition. So I'm just gonna go through the things that I do when I'm looking at a bike for the first time. So the first thing I do when I'm looking at a bike is I just look over the bike at the condition that the bike is in. I haven't touched a thing on this bike. This is exactly how it is when I picked it up. Um, I talk to the owner and get some idea on what they did with the bike. And I just look at the outside condition of the bike and um, see what type of condition that the bike is in. This one here is in very average condition. It's actually quite poor. Um, so I just go around and then I check the engine see if it's hot, see if they've had the bike running before I got there. If the engine's hot, you know it probably has a problem starting the engine, could have some issues, it could be a real pain to start, but this one's engine was cold, so that was a good sign. Once I've had a good look at the outside of the bike, at the plastics and the overall condition of it just by looking at it, I then ask the owner if I can get it up on a stand or on some sort of thing so I can get the wheels off the ground. Once I have the wheels off the ground, I like to check the wheel bearings. You do that by simply moving the wheel back and forward. You also rotate the wheel, see if it's running true and square and not wobbling all over the place. This one here is actually quite good. While the back wheel is off the ground, I also check the swing arm. I check for movement. This one here has a small amount of movement in it. So this could mean the, uh, the bearings are gone. It doesn't have any side to side movement but up and down it does have a little. I will then check the chain and sprockets for wear. This one here seems to be about half worn. It's not completely shot, but it is definitely well used. The front sprocket is about the same amount of wear. I don't know what it is with people, but they always seem to advertise their motorcycle as just having a fresh engine rebuild. This engine here has apparently had three hours since it had an engine rebuild. If you look at this engine, you can see a spanner has not been to this engine in a long time. It's also just had the carburetor rebuilt. This carburetor hasn't had any attention, apart from this that's fell off it, um, for quite some time. So I quickly shut the owner down and said, mate, this bike has not had an engine rebuild in the last three hours. And he tried to say, yes, it did. And I said, mate, I know what I'm looking at. You can see these gaskets are absolutely chockers with gunk and rubbish, and these casings have never been split. And then I got the truth out of him and he said, oh, it was three years ago, but I haven't ridden it for two years. I do believe him in some of this because you can see here on the frame where it's rusty. Now normally your boots would scuff this up and he does have a two year old KTM which he says he has been riding and the KTM is quite worn. So I'm saying this one probably has been sitting there for two years but it definitely is not three hours from the last engine rebuild. You can see the condition of this exhaust pipe is fairly scaly and rusty. It has a few dents here and there. Another good sized dent here. So these are all things that you can use to bargain the price of the bike and in as the condition of the bike. The radiators seem in not too bad condition for its age. A little bit of a crease here on both, both radiators have a little bit. It's also a good idea to check the fluid level on the bike before you start it, just to make sure that there is fluid in it. And this bike here has plenty. I then move to the front of the bike and I also check the wheel bearings. The wheel bearings are surprisingly good in this bike, considering the condition of the rest of the bike. You check that the wheel runs square, and even the brakes, the, the disc isn't bent, it's not rubbing or anything like that. It's also a good opportunity to check the headset bearings. You should be able to move this with no binding and with fairly much no pressure at all. In fact, it should just go like that with no hands. 
Now you can hear a scrape. Now that scrape is just the guard hitting on these radiator guard areas. They're broken and need replacing. Now is a good time to test the front brake just by squeezing the brake and pushing on your forks. You're also testing your forks for any kind of leaks and strange movements in the forks. You can see on this bike that these fork seals are leaking quite badly. The other side, not as bad, but I would say both of these forks would need, considering the age of the bike, a complete rebuild kit put through them. This bike here has come with brand new tyres on it. So that's quite a good thing to get when looking at a bike. Brand new tyres is one more cost you don't have to concern yourself with. The back tyre is also new. It still has the furry stuff on the edges. But um, obviously the top bits have come off from the test ride. But the back tyre is still a new tyre. I also like to ask the owner if I can inspect the air cleaner. Some people don't like you to do this or pull apart their bike. But if they do, and they pretty much should do, I always check the air filter. And to my surprise, the air filter on this bike was actually very clean. Considering the condition of the rest of the bike, it was a, a nice surprise to see a clean and oiled air filter. Both front and rear discs seem to be in quite good condition. The brake pads also have plenty of meat on them. As you turn it, they don't bind or grind on anything which says they're not bent in any way. They also have no grooves on the disc at all. It actually feels like a fairly fresh disc. They just have rust on them because it hasn't been ridden and you would need to remove that rust. An example of a bad disc would look like this one. And you can see the lines and that's actually like about a one to two mil groove here and here. So that's a very worn out disc and this a disc like this definitely needs a replacing. When I took this bike for a test ride, the brakes were very bad. Even though the condition of these brakes are good to look at, they had a lot of rust on this section here because the bike had been sitting for so long and it did take a, a couple of goes of using the brakes to um, actually get the brakes to bind and rip this rust off it so they'd actually start working. I thought these brakes were really bad. I also noticed a little bit later that the owner hasn't slid this uh, brake um, caliper into the slide. It's sitting on top so I'm thinking that may also hold an issue to the brakes. Now before I start the bike I always like to check the oil. Two reasons. One to make sure it actually has some in it. The second reason is to actually see how clean the oil is. Wind a bit up. This oil here isn't too bad. It's not brand new, but it certainly could do with some riding before it needs to be changed. So that's quite good. It's also a good time to check what kind of compression the bike holds. This bike actually holds quite good compression. Before I test ride a bike, I like to check to see what the brakes feel like on the bike to make sure that the bike will actually stop when I go to test ride it. I also like to check that the accelerator is not sticky. Because I don't know this bike, you don't know what kind of problems it could have, so you certainly don't want a sticky accelerator and you most definitely want brakes that are working. It's now time to start the bike and take it for a test ride. First thing you need is to turn the fuel on. This fuel cock looks like it's around the wrong way. So the fuel's on, I give it a little bit of choke, and then I start the bike. How many kicks has it been started since I bought it two days ago? After looking at the bike and seeing how 
ugly and pretty beaten up and bad condition it looked in, I didn't give it much hope for the test ride. But I was pleasantly surprised that this bike absolutely cracked. It went really good. So maybe it has had an engine build, it just has never seen a pressure washer. Um, so anyway, these are some of the things that I look out for. Look for any faults you can. Explain to the owner how much it will possibly cost you to get these faults fixed. Use those faults and the cost of these faults in the bargaining process for the bike and hopefully you can find yourself a good bike at a good price. Hey, watch this video next or go to the Broken Sprocket video library and choose another top video. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. After all, it's for free and guaranteed to make your day 20% better. If you're already a subscriber and you're having a bad day, just think it could have been 20% worse. You can also follow Broken Sprocket on Instagram. So, I'll see you in the next video.